What is going on friends and welcome back to the Minecraft Hub channel. It has been a long time since we've looked at any mods for Minecraft, but today we are going to be checking out some of the best mods for 1.18. All the mods that I'm showing off today are for Fabric 1.18.1. Some are also available for Forge, and I'll be doing a Forge specific video very soon. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a like on it, and if you're new to our channel, hit that subscribe button as well. We don't only do modded content, but basically everything Minecraft, so go ahead and check us out. The first mod we are checking out today is Terralith, and this mod is available for both Forge and Fabric, and it is probably one of my favorite world generation mods out there. This is just such a cool mod. Of course, 1.18 changed the world generation of Minecraft already, but this mod goes above and beyond, adding a whole slew of new biomes, and they are all just so cool looking. This mod adds over 85 new biomes to Minecraft and also changes up the existing ones. It's really crazy what this mod does and how different your world is going to look with it. You're going to find volcano biomes and also even some floating sky island biomes, which I think would be really fun to build on top of. This mod also changes up the cave generation, so you're really going to have a whole new Minecraft to explore once you install this mod. This mod can even be installed as a data pack, and if you're the one generating the world, nobody else on your server or realm needs to have it. Next up, this mod makes trading with villagers just a little bit easier. So all these buildings of course have different villager professions or just houses, and to trade with all these villagers it can be a little annoying to go around to each different villager and figure out which trade they actually offer. This mod is Trading Posts and introduces Trading Posts to the game so that you can go up and actually trade with all the different villager types in one single spot. This is going to make trading with villagers much, much easier so you don't actually have to go around and find each individual villager. They'll actually just be right in this trading post as long as they're within range of it. You can even search up items that you're looking for. So if you want chicken, you can just type in chicken and the chicken trades will come up from whatever villagers are in range. This mod would be especially helpful if you have a villager breeding center uh, where you're actually putting all of these trades together and then you can just put this down in the middle of the room and collect all the trades right there. Next up is Wilder World. This mod adds just a few little things to the flower forest biomes of your world, mostly in different forms of new plants. There are some modified birch trees, uh, a new tree completely, and even some butterflies that you'll see flying around in the flower forest. Of course these are all great, but what I really love about this mod is that it adds new potions to the game, and these potions are actually pretty fun to use. One of the new potions is a rage potion which increases your attack power and also your speed, so you're going to move really quickly and hit pretty hard, which is of course super fun to play around with. The next potion is the Shelf Sense 2 potion, and what this potion does is it allows you to climb basically any block just like a ladder. So as I run at all these blocks, all I have to do is press W to actually go forward against them and I'm automatically going to climb these blocks. This is actually super useful if you're trying to climb trees or mountains, you can just stick to the side of any of these blocks and automatically begin climbing up. And you'll also notice that I'm moving very quickly right now and that is due to the Rage Potion. The third and final new potion is the Glowing Potion and this is basically a spectral arrow hits you and that's what it does to you. It makes you have that glow effect around you which I think is pretty interesting. This could definitely be useful as a splash potion to hit something else with. I don't see much use for it on yourself. But overall this mod adds just a few new things to your flower forest and also some new potions which are always great additions to the game. Next up is Not Enough Animations. This is a very small mod that just adds a few new animations to the game to make it look a little more realistic, especially in the third person view. So in third person, now when I'm holding out a map, you can actually see that I'm holding a map and you can even see the map itself. It also adds some new horse animation so that you actually hold the reins on the horse and it also adds a new animation for the boat so that you're actually rowing the boat. This one is probably my favorite besides the map animation just because it adds a little more immersion to this portion of the game. Next up is Easy Magic. What this mod does is it changes up the enchantment table just a little bit by making it hold an inventory and also being able to be accessed by hoppers. This is a pretty interesting mod. You can now re-roll your enchantments just like in the old Minecraft and you can even leave your pickaxe and lapis inside of the enchantment table so that you don't have to take it out. 
When you leave these things inside the enchantment table, they'll actually just float around the top, which I think is a really nice animation and adds to the magic of the enchantment table. You can also see that I can reroll enchantments now, but you can also toggle that off if you think that is too easy. You can also access the enchantment table by hopper, so I have a hopper full of lapis that is just feeding the enchantment table. This could be somewhat useful if you just want an endless supply of lapis, or you're doing some automatic enchanting because you can now also input items through a hopper up top and export them out the bottom so that you're doing some constant enchanting, but I have no clue why you need to do that much enchanting in Minecraft. Next up is another small animation mod, and this is Effective. What this does is it basically just changes up the characteristics of water so that when things land in the water, it actually makes a splash. I think this is a really cool effect, especially on waterfalls, because it also adds a new sound to the game, which I think sounds really nice and adds to more immersion of the game. This is just a really small effect, but does look super nice and I think would work well with any waterfalls that you have in your world. Or if you want to make some sort of water thing inside your base, it would also add some new sounds, which can be very relaxing. Next up is Friends and Foes, and what this mod does is it hopes to add all the mobs that lost the vote during the mob votes into the game. So right here we have the Moo Bloom, which just adds yellow cows with flowers on top. So far, the Glare and the Copper Golem have also been added, and there are hopes to add some more mobs in the future. The Copper Golems actually walk around and press copper buttons, which have also been added in this mod, and they have a pretty cool animation where they wave their arms and their head also spins around their entire body. I think that really adds to the cuteness of this little mob, and I really still wish this mob had won the mob vote. Seeing the glare in game is also pretty cool and now I really do like this mob as well, although I don't think it was as cool as the Copper Golem and LA. Next up is Hookshot, and this mod is really fun to play around with. It basically just adds a grapple hook to the game that you can use to actually grab onto things from far away and pull yourself to them. This isn't going to pull any mobs or items to you, but it will pull you to anything you point at. It does have a limited range, the default is 24 blocks, but all that can be upgraded uh, through different ways of upgrading the hookshot. You can add a prismarine shard to use it underwater, you can add a piston to make it quicker, you can add a chain to make it longer, and there are a lot more things you can do with it. Definitely be careful while using this though, because you still can take fall damage if you pull yourself to something that is too high up. Next up we have more axolotls, and this adds a ton more variations of axolotls to the game, which I think is a super fun mod, especially to see all the new colors and variations of axolotl. These things are really cool to look at, I think they are great to throw in an aquarium in your base, things like that, especially once you have all these new colors. Of course there is a lot of new additions of axolotls to the game, and to categorize all those, they actually included a book as well so you can look through at all the different axolotl types and how you get each type of axolotl. It adds a little description of each one and how you can obtain it in game. Of course, blue axolotl is through rare breeding, but then later on you're going to have uh, the chimera, which is from breeding the lucy and wild. So a lot of these you're going to have to breed specific ones to actually get exactly what you want. Next up we have Fabric Seasons. What this mod does is it adds a system to the game that every 28 days the season changes from spring, summer, fall, winter, and it has a beautiful look in the game. This mod changes the look of the trees and grass, and also even the weather to fit the season that you're actually in. So weather is going to change if you're in a snow biome, then it's going to rain during the summer, and forests will even see snow instead of rain during the winter. The trees and grass will change completely different colors from summer to winter, and I think it all looks super nice and is a definite uh, little change to the game that could add a lot of fun. Right here we can see a slight change from the summer to fall and then to the winter trees in a jungle and you can see that there is a massive difference between summer and winter. And we will also see different changes in the weather patterns as I said. Right here we have a forest that is snowing during the winter but as soon as we set it back to spring all that is going to change to rain. Although when you're using commands that change is a little slower than it would be in real time. 
That is all the mods that I have for you guys today though. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll have a forge video out very soon and I'm also working on a part two to the building mod video that I did a while back and I'll have some updated building mods for the 1.18.1 update. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.